Greetings and welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we are looking at word problems and we are on page 247. All right, Mrs. Thompson packs eight packs with pen, uh, backpacks with pens and notebooks for a donation drive. She has 32 pens and some notebooks. She puts, the, puts an equal number of pens into each backpack. How many pens are there in each backpack? She puts two notebooks in each backpack. What is the total number of school supplies in each backpack? Okay, so the first thing we need to figure out here, and I think they're going to show us the rest of this problem on the back of the page, yeah. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how many pens uh, she puts in each one. All right, so here we have 32 pens total, and we are dividing it into eight different parts. So how many are in each one? So we're going to do 32 divided by 8, and 32 divided by 8 is 4. Okay, and that's true because 4 times 8 equals 32. Okay, so there are four pins in each backpack. All right, let's turn over to page 248. All right, now we want to figure out how many she puts in each thing. Okay, so we know that there, well, um, there were four uh, pins and two notebooks in each one. 4 plus 2 is 6. So there are a total of six school supplies in each one, right? And that's true because uh, six minus oops, six minus two equals four. Okay, so this is just a two-step problem here, right? Uh, four minus or ah, six minus two is four, and four times eight is thirty-two. Okay, so the answers are correct. All right, let's turn over to page 249. All right, so Alan collects his favorite, uh, collects jerseys of his favorite baseball teams. He collects 10 jer uh, baseball jerseys in each of the nine drawers. He still has 12 jerseys left. How many jerseys are there in each drawer? How many jerseys are there in all? All right, so here they have this cool model set up for us. All right, so what they have here is they have the nine drawers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and notice that they're all colored yellow, right? Because we'll want to make sure that they're different somehow, right? And then this last one, they've colored blue, right? And it has 12 in it. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many are in all the drawers, okay? So there are nine drawers, so we're going to do nine times, how many in each drawer? Ten, right? Nine times ten is 90. So there are 90 there are 90 in, uh, in drawers, okay? And so this is question mark A, question mark B, right? Now, I know there are 90 in the drawers, and I have this extra 12 over here. What am I gonna do with that extra 12 to figure it out? I know this is 90 now. 90 and 12 make, make this number, but what are we gonna do with that? Yeah, we're gonna add them, okay? 90 plus 12, zero plus two is 2, 9 plus 1 is 10, let's check it, 102 minus 12, 2 minus 2 is 0, I need to regroup, 10 minus 1 is 9, that checks out, alright, so now we know there are 102 jerseys in all. Alright, let's turn over to page 250. All right. Howard saves $319, okay? So there's his total amount of money saved. He used some of his savings to buy a present for his mother. He spent the rest on three books. Each book cost $23, okay? So here, $23 for each book. There's the amount that he spent on books. How much did he spend on the books? Now, uh, their model is totally fine. The way I would have drawn it would have just been a little bit simpler. I would have done 319. I would have shaded these in and shown that each book was $23. And I would have done this to show I need to find how much. All right, so instead of breaking it down like they did, I would have just done it like this. Okay, three parts, each equals 23, and shading them in to show that it's a little bit different. All right, and we want to know how much he spent on the present, okay? 
So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how much did he spend on the books, right? So I have three groups of 23, right? So get rid of that on my model. There's one, two, three groups. Each group has 23. So we're going to do three times 23, right? So 23 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 20 is 60. Add those together and you get 69. Or 23 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? So you spent $69 on the books. Um, you don't know long division, so I'm not going to have you do a check on that one. Right? Now, I need to figure out how much you spent in all, or how much you spent on the present. So now I know that this part of the model equals 69. This equals 69. All right? So now we can ignore this part, right? And we see that the whole thing equals 319. One of the parts is 69. What's the other part? So here, when I have the whole and I break it into one part, how do I find the missing part? I use subtraction. All right? So it's been a while since we've used subtraction, but we're still going to use it, okay? So 319 minus 69. 9 minus 9 is 0. 1 minus 6, I need to regroup. This becomes a 2. This becomes an 11. 11 minus 6 is 5. 2 minus nothing is 2. Right? So I think the answer is going to be 250. So we did 319 minus 69. Right? Let's check it. 250 plus 69. 0 plus 9 is 9. 5 plus 6 is 11. 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 2 is 3. 319 and 319 check out, and therefore we can have confidence that 250 is the right answer. All right. Okay, so let's move over to page 251. 251 is practice on your own. All right, so you're going to go ahead and do this problem here and this problem. Now, they've done it to where it's in two different parts so that they were using two different models to find these answers. All right. If you want to use two different models to find the answers, because what we're going to have is a multiple step problem here, you're welcome to do that. Okay. But if you want to try and model it in just one problem and it makes sense to you, that totally works as well. But make sure that you have the model, the algorithms that are necessary, and the checks. Unless you're multiplying a one digit by a two digit number, then you don't know long division yet. Uh, or at least I haven't taught it, and therefore I'm not going to expect you to do it. Okay? All right, go ahead and do these problems now. All right, so hopefully you have these finished. So let's look at these together. All right, my model may not be exactly like yours, uh, but I'll probably draw the one that's the most efficient, that takes the, le less, the, the least amount of drawing. And so if yours doesn't look like mine, um, you can copy mine down to get an idea of what yours could look like. But there's probably going to be some different kinds of ways to do it. Right? So, there are 12 third graders. Each of them sell five tickets for a carnival. They sell 16 more tickets than the fourth graders. All right, so how many tickets do the third graders sell? How many tickets do the fourth graders sell? Okay, so here, I'm going to model this. There are 12 third graders. I want my model to be a little bit easier to all those lines, so I'm going to do it like this. All right, so uh, each of them sell five tickets. Right? And there's 12 of them. Right? And I don't know how many there are. That's one of the things I need to figure out is how many they sold. Now it tells me that they sold 16 more tickets than the fourth graders. So this is third. Right? If they sold more, does that mean that fourth grade's bar is going to be bigger or smaller? Third grade, the third graders sold, they sold, third graders sold, um, sell 16 more tickets than the fourth graders. So that means fourth graders going to have a smaller ball. ball bar, not ball, fourth, okay, it's going to be smaller. How much smaller? 16. All right, and what this is another one we need to look for. Okay, so this is question mark uh, B, this is question mark A. All right, so here we have 12 groups of five, so how do we do that? Yeah, we're going to multiply five and 12. Now, um, we're going to put 12 on top. So whenever we have multiplying, we're always going to put 12 on uh, the bigger number on the top. Okay, We can move them any way we want, but it'll be easier. 
All right, so here we go. Uh, first, we'll do it with the breaking it into its part into its um, to its parts. So five times two is ten. Five times one is, or sorry, five times ten is fifty. Add these together. Zero plus zero is zero. Six plus one is, or five plus uh, one plus five is six. Here we go. Twelve times five. Five times two is ten. I'm gonna put the one up here. Save it for a minute. 5 times 1 is 5, plus this extra one that I have is 60, okay? So the third grader sold 60 tickets. Right. Now we need to figure out how many the fourth graders sold. So here we know that third grade now sold 60, and fourth grade sold 16 less than them, all right? We know that third graders sold more. So here we're going to use subtraction. We're going to do 60 minus the 16, the difference. 0 minus 6, that'd be negative 6. Don't want to do that. So we need to regroup. This becomes a 5. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 1 is 4. Let's check that. 44 plus 16. 4 plus 6 is 10. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. 60 and 60 check out, and so fourth grade sold 44 tickets. All right, let's turn over to page 252. All right, at a school assembly, 57 children took part in the drama performance. After the performance, 25 children left the stage. The rest of the children then danced in groups of four. How many children were, uh, were there in the dance performance? All right. So uh, after the performance, the children left, the rest of the children did a dance, okay? So we got to figure out how many children did the dance, how many children, how many groups of children were there in the dance performance, okay? So here we want to start off by, by modeling this. You may have done this in two models. That's totally fine, okay? So there are 57 children total, all right? After the performance, so after the drama performance, um, 25 children left. Okay, 25 left. The rest of the children danced in groups of four. So I'm going to shade this one to show that it's different. And then I'm going to make this into groups of four. Okay, in groups of four. How many children were there in the dance performance? So that's going to be how many were in the dance performance. So this is letter A. How many children were there? Um, how many groups of children? Oh, they were in groups of four. Sorry, I messed that up. So in groups of four. One, two, three. Question mark. We don't know how many groups, but they were in groups of four. All right. And this is going to be letter B. Right, so that's how I've modeled it. Again, you could easily do this in two models. All right, so first thing, um, 57 children, 25 left. How am I gonna figure out how many stayed? I'm gonna use subtraction. 57 minus 25. Seven minus five is two. Five minus two is three. So I think the answer is going to be 32. But I do wanna check that, 32 plus 25 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 2 is 5, and I get 57, 57. Okay, all right, so there are 32 children. So now I can ignore all of that part of my, my model. I now have 32 children total in groups of 4. How would I figure out how many groups there are? I just division, right? I would do 32 divided by 4. I know that it's going to be 4 times what equals 32, 4 times 8 equals 32. 32 divided by 4 equals 8, okay? And so that means that there were 8 groups of children in the dance performance, right? So letter B is 8. There are 8 groups. All right, that is all for our lesson today. I hope you have a terrific day. Good luck on your independent work, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.